You cram it before the test? I'll probably have to break this out and you can edit. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, when you have like 20 beers that you make, it's hard to like know this for each one without looking at the thing. Yeah, I'm usually thinking about the next beer we're gonna make, not all the right. ones we just made. <laughs> yeah, I believe in you. You believe in me? I believe in you. Before we get started, I forgot to bring my slate. So do you wanna like hold your hands like right here and just clap them and say one? One? Yes, take one. All right. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of What's on Draft. We are here in North Park at North Park Beer Company. You guys may remember from season one, Kelsey gave us a walk through this place and showed us it being built. So now it's season two, they're open, they're pouring beer and we finally get to drink some. So Kelsey, how you doing, man? Good, how are you, Tom? I'm great. This is actually the first time that we've had the opportunity to like sit and have a beer together. So I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I figured this, you know, we would have been able to do that, but you know. Yeah. We're both we almost did at one of your events. We had like a five second window where we were both relaxing and having a beer and then like. Something went wrong. Something went yeah. wrong and you had to go do it. And I was like, oh. Story almost. of my life. Yeah. <laughs> What's on draft? Since we've opened, we've been steadily adding to the board and we just hit our peak of 14 beers. Okay. Start you off uh, the first beer, which would be Covington Cream Ale. You know, this is gonna be a classic interpretation of a cream ale, not the sort of cream ale 2.0 that some breweries are making that's a bit more like a cream soda. There's no vanilla in this. It's right. not a nitro beer, but we're using traditional ingredients. We use six row, we use two row, we use uh, flake maize. This is gonna be the first beer you make someone try who hasn't had craft beer. Exactly, it's yeah. a great way to introduce somebody to something that has a lot of flavor but is still very light and easy. Sort of like, not sweetness, but sort of the impression of sweetness? Right. From the from the corn, is that Exactly, the yeah. They're clean and they're correct, you know that, what I mean? That's kind of the background that I came from, was you know trying to create my own interpretations of classic styles and pay a lot of respect to those beers and where they came from. As a brewer, you go out, you taste beers, and you get inspired. You say, yeah. oh, well, I really like you know how this works, and I want to try and make my own interpretation. And I mean, that's kind of what I'm talking about with the Scottish export here, mm -hmm. Chavo Stash. It's very much trying to be a classic Scottish session ale. Yeah. Um, and you know, you'll, you'll go out there and you'll try commercial versions of this that are made in the States. And you know, sometimes they use a hint of peat smoked malt, but we don't because that's not something that if you go to Scotland and you actually drink the 60, 70, 80 shillings over there, they're so clean. There's, there's just like this nice ride of caramel flavors. Yeah, Chavo Stash. This is a, is that a reference to your assistant brewer? No, <laughs> that's Joaquin. Uh, no. I thought maybe his nickname was Shavo or something. No, during beer week, we had a mustache competition. Did you grow a mustache? I didn't. No, I'm not allowed. I was going to say, I can't yeah, picture. My, my wife doesn't approve, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> it's not a thing. You would look really creepy with a mustache. I know. <laughs> so this is your 80 shilling. Correct. There's a little bit of East Kent Golding in there, you know. Nice body, but again, what is it, like 4%? Yeah, 4% Yeah, that one's 4%. It's 9 a.m. and I'm already... Yeah, but that one's, you know, you're gonna be able to drink that and you go back to work. Right. You know, it's definitely a working man's kind of beer. Well, I am working right now. Like, yeah. This is my job. Or, or working woman, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Did you just assume my gender? Uh... <laughs> no, we're not going there. <laughs> you still have my intergalactic growler, I think. Actually, yeah, I think I, think I do. Just hanging onto that growler, huh? Well, I mean, if you want it back, we'll, you know. <laughs> it's okay, I know where you live. Yeah. You live here, you don't live in a yeah, house. Yeah, no, 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 this is, this is my, my home away from home is my house, so. Right, but at least it's a cool place to hang out. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the reasons why I wanted the tasting room to have a cool aesthetic. I'm like, I'm gonna have to spend a hell of a lot of time here. Right. I better enjoy it, you know? yeah. So it wasn't for the customers, it was just for you. It was for me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, this was very self-serving, you know. It's definitely a testament to wanting to do something a certain way and, and waiting until you could do it right, do it the way you wanted, rather than compromising on. Finding the right location was, was critical. I, I wanted to open a brewery in North Park. I did not want to settle for some other market because I love this neighborhood. Because you I live, live here, right? Neighborhood. Yeah, we rarely leave the neighborhood. I mean, this is a great community. It's a great place to be, and this is where we wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. you know? 
What's number three? Okay, so number three is the, the Devil in Disguise. This is going to be a, a Belgian Golden Strong Ale. Again, paying respect to the classic, you know, Duval is one of my favorite beers. Oh, okay. It was very much a Pilsner, you know, but but brewed in the Belgian style. With Trappist so, yeah. yeast? And we used Abbey Ale yeast in this, okay. uh, White Labs 530. There's some kind of, of that banana note from the Just yeast, a little but, bit, but, yeah. but it's subtle. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's 8.7% and, you know, it really drinks. This is 8.7? Yeah. Really? I thought this was the pale. This is like... No, that's... This is a strong ale? Yeah. <laughs> wow. All the more impressive. Go easy with that one. I shudder to say sessionable, but it kind of is. If I have two of those, I definitely feel it the next day. Right. Yeah. But any beer is a session beer if you believe in yourself. As we say, it, you know, sleep away. True. Just confidence. Yeah. Confidence <laughs> in drinking. Any bottle releases or can releases or anything like that? We're looking at uh, bringing in mobile bottling to do some, you know, random releases of stuff. I don't think you'll see like six packs or anything like that right. coming out, but I'd love to do some bomber releases of some of our beers um, from time to time. So I, I started drinking this fourth beer without asking you what it was. Yeah, so we're both drinking the same thing now. Oh. Um, Golden Phoenix. It's a breakfast blonde ale. So, you know, okay. we've, we've built up a beer that is golden in color, lactose, you know, hefty amount of oatmeal, yeah. and some toasty malts, Vienna and Munich, coarse ground coffee that we add wow. directly to the fermenter. I mean, basically what we're doing is we're making a cold brewed coffee in the beer. It's not four logo, so relax, guys. <laughs> no, that's really good. I, I definitely do get uh, toast, coffee aroma, but not coffee bitterness. But yeah, I wanted something that had the elements of breakfast, you know, coffee, milk, oatmeal. Yeah, it's great. It's a great way to start the day. I think this might be the biggest flight that I've ever done on the show. I try to limit myself to eight because once I get past eight, it's hard for me to say words. Well, we've got a lot of fun stuff on right now, so I wanted to make sure. Yeah, that... exactly. Like, the beer's good, so I'm like, well, I don't want to not drink everything, so. <laughs> We're going to Panoramic. It's not going to be an IPA. It's going to be a higher gravity uh, version of a pale ale. Definitely going to have some dry hop character to it. Mm, I get a lot of uh, citrus. Yeah, right yeah, the definitely. Gate. This one is hopped with uh, Cascade Centennial, which, you know, old school classics. And yeah. then we've gone new school with Simcoe and Mosaic. Okay. Uh, oh, that's so good. We use honey malt in this, but otherwise it's, you know, it's just two row and a little bit of dextrin malt. This is really good, man. Thank you. It's interesting because I feel like 10 years ago, this would have been considered an IPA. My homebrewed versions of that, anytime I gave it to somebody, they're like, why don't you just call it an IPA? I'm like, well, I'm actually trying to fit into a style. I forgot to bring my growler. I like, I bought a North Park growler. If I can find that intergalactic one, I okay. obscure it and- <laughs> Yeah, fill, you get the tape, the, the, the law, it's allowed now. Yeah. yeah. A lot of hoops to jump through. Oh yeah. Was that, was that a surprise opening? For us to get our license issued took well over a year. Yeah. Like we were almost, 18 months in to get the ABC license issued. Calling Sacramento and then waiting and sending emails and waiting and... Well, some of it had to do with uh, our kitchen arrangement here. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, we don't we don't run the kitchen here. Mastiff um, does, yeah. yeah. You know, we're, we're a type 23 license, which is a small beer manufacturer. But then you also have the bona fide restaurant. Right, but the thing is, there were no provisions in the code that would allow a subleasing of food sales to a third party for a type 23. You know, we basically had to deal with this whole changing of the code to make an allowance for it. Like this- Really? Yeah, we actually kind of pioneered this concept, even though it had been done and we could point a finger to other establishments that had already done it. Somehow those slipped through the cracks and we were like the ones that kind of got stuck with a bunch of... So you went full dogfish head and you like changed the law to get your yeah, thing we, open? Yeah, we, we changed things. There you go. Yeah. So now this Progress. is a thing, like if you want to sublet your, your food sales, you can do that. Well, good. Yeah. Because maybe I'll do that someday. Maybe you will. If I ever open a real brewery, not sleep away. This is fake. This is just for the laughs. I think it's, <laughs> it's gonna happen. <laughs> so what's the next thing? So now you're on to the flagship. Yeah. Oh, it's hot beer that started it all. Yeah. 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 So, so this is the hop food. Actually, I think Aaron drank the first commercial batch. I think he had the first pint. Wow. What's on draft? We've been here since day one. <laughs> you know, classic West Coast IPA. It's got Simcoe, Amarillo, Citra, Chinook, 
Centennial Warrior. I mean, if you think of crystal malt as like, you know, salt and pepper, like it's just- Just a dash. Just a dash. Yeah. Just enough so that it's gonna lift some hops without being like, oh, boom, crystal malt. Right, pine and resin for sure. Yeah. It's good stuff, I dig it. Now we're on to Ride the Tiger, so. Ride the Tiger, so this is a, uh... Double IPA? Yes, yeah, double IPA. There's no crystal malt in this beer. This beer is uh, Nelson Sauvin, Motuika, two great New Zealand hops. Yeah. And then a little bit of Chinook because I, I wanted to bring some grapefruit to the fruit salad. Yeah, again, you're you're really good at making the high gravity beers taste like they're not high gravity beers, which is good and bad. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it brings forth that dangerous factor. Yeah. Like dextrin malt to build up the body, but then you use some dextrose, you know, corn sugar to dry it out and it's kind of like this this sort of yin and yang thing that that okay. leaves you with a beer that is very dry and drinkable but still doesn't come across as thin when you get to that point where your beer tastes the way you expect it to you want to be able to make that same beer over and over again as much as you can so you know we build our water with reverse osmosis because i don't want this to be like the one time i make this beer and it tastes like this i want to make sure that the next time i make it yeah. it's going to be as close to that as possible with the control points that i actually have control over yeah water is important it's like 90 percent of beer yep you strike me as a very private person has that been an adjustment to feel like you're kind of under the microscope and under the fishbowl? Like, I mean, I'm I'm definitely more of an introvert, so yeah. it's it's a little awkward. It's a little weird for me. Ride the tiger. Yeah, and the name for that beer, running a business, is very much like riding a tiger. Okay. If you get off the tiger, the tiger's gonna eat you. You know, so you you have to you have to learn how to ride the tiger with confidence and and grace and just go with it. Right, I mean, yeah, because the tiger's gonna go wherever it wants to go, and you just have to make sure that you're in sync with the tiger. Yeah. There have been many a days where, you know, the day's just kicking my ass, and I want to get off that tiger, you know, just for even a moment, but it's right. like, the second you do, you lose control, and yeah. you know, so you gotta stay on it. That's cool. So what is this one? This is an Imperial Stout? No, 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 this is a, so this is Pierpont's Reserve. Uh, this is our Imperial Porter. Like a Baltic Porter? Yeah, so it's the Baltic Porter we ferment it with an ale yeast. To me, it's, you know, it's it's like a bigger Schwartz beer, you know, it's, it's like a really malty, clean, you know, has some chocolatey notes. Just a real big malt bomb. We use yeah. Munich, Munich malt as the basis for that. It's like 90 something percent Munich malt. Munich two? No, it's Munich one, but, Munich one. You know, just, but when you use that much of it, it's just like, it's malty. You know? Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of malt character for sure. I have one thing I want to run by you before we go to the last beer. Okay. And you had some apprehension to it, but I feel like you don't really understand. I know where so, this is going. <laughs> <laughs> you know the sexy brewer's calendar uh, of yes, 2017. I'm, I'm aware of this. Uh... We're starting to get everything ready for the sexy brewer's calendar of 2018. I've created an artist's rendering oh, geez. <laughs> of what it might look like if you participated. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's something tasteful, black and white. With a cat. With the cat. <laughs> you know, you don't have to say yes or no right now. <laughs> but you know, you can just think about it. You want me to sleep on that one? Yeah, just, just okay. sleep on it. You know, it's, it's a good photograph. I'm sure that you probably want a print out of it. I'm sure you'll, you're gonna make me one anyway. I'm going to. So, you know, just consider it. I'm not sure anybody wants to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is, uh, this is mocha massage. You know, basically took a traditional oatmeal stout recipe and kind of built it into a, an imperial interpretation. So this, okay. this came up to 9.4%. Uh, the aroma is very coffee. Right. Interestingly enough, this used the same coffee that was uh, in the Golden Phoenix. Brazilian, like medium roast from, from Mostra. Same amount? Yeah, two pounds per barrel. Really? Two days prior to the coffee going in, we put in two pounds per barrel of cocoa nibs. We were trying to build like this sort of, you know, fudgy, chocolatey, you know, kind of backbone, and then the coffee, you know. Smooth mouthfeel, good body, very drinkable for a high gravity beer. Take a cab to North Park Beer <laughs> Company. Uber or <laughs> Lyft or whatever. Or yeah. Lyft. Yeah, Lyft. Lyft, right. I'm glad this is the last one because I don't think I can drink anymore. I haven't been following you, but I don't think I can drink much more. Yeah. I picked both of our coffee beers because I figured, well, we'll four loco thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> balance out the caffeine with right. the... It's a great tasting room, flawless execution, and well thought out. The beer is just phenomenal, so cheers, cheers to that. 
That is it for this episode of What's on Draft. We will see you next Monday with a brand new episode. Thanks for watching. Cheers. You drank nine beers. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> No me quiere como yo